Okay, welcome to lesson 4.2. On this one, we're going to start looking at the circumference of a circle. And in this lesson, students are going to explore the relationship between the circumference of a circle and the diameter of the same circle. And we're going to get you to understand that, um, that there's a relationship between these two things, and that relationship creates pi, which is a very special number, and we'll get to that in a moment. So what you're going to need is you're going to need some string, a ruler, and some various circular objects. Uh, it could be a tape roll, a roll of masking tape, a roll of duct tape, it could be a cup, a couple of glasses, anything that you have that actually has a circular, circular shape on a cylinder shape that we can actually use. All right. Now, I don't particularly have um, the same objects that you have, so it becomes difficult for me to do what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to take and, and measure my stuff so that you get a chance to actually, uh, you know, you, you can do the parallel with me. So I've got a roll of tape and I have a glass, okay? And this particular roll of tape is a duct tape, and this duct tape is about seven centimeters on the outside of it right now. It's not much left. Okay, so my diameter is seven centimeters. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw it here for you. This is what my duct tape looks like, and I'm going to measure the distance. I've just told you the distance across the middle right here was seven centimeters. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my string. I'm going to grab my string here. I'm going to wrap my string around the outside of this cup. And I'm just going to sort of mark where the string catches and lines up with where I start it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that string and I'm going to unwrap it. So here's where the mark is. And I'm going to take that string and I'm going to lay it out. And then I'm going to use my ruler. And I'm going to measure the distance of that ruler. Okay? So I'm just going to give me a second to do this. I get about 20, about 21 and a half. So 21.5 centimeters is what I get here for my circumference. That's the distance around the outside. Okay? And now I'm going to take my glass. My glass is, is a little bit smaller. It's only it's only about six centimeters. So I'm going to take and erase this so you can see what I'm going to do. Okay. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did. Okay. I've got a circular circular glass and again this time it's about six centimeters. And I'm going to take my string I'm going to wrap it around again just like I just did. All right? And then I'm going to lay that string out, and I'm going to measure it. And just give me a second to do that. And it's get, I almost get exactly 18. So 18 centimeters. And of course, I told you it was a 6 centimeter uh, circular diameter. Okay, so now with your calculator, what I want to do is I want to grab my calculator and I want to do some dividing just to help out here. So I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to put it here so you can see it. Okay, so here's my calculator. Make it a little bit bigger for you. All right, and I'm going to take the diameter and the circumference, the distance around the outside, and I'm going to measure the distance around the outside. So in this case, it is 21.5. So I'll put that pen away. 21.5 centimeters. That was my, my circumference. And I'm going to divide that by 7. That was my diameter. And this is what I got right here. I get 3.07. So I'm going to grab that number and I'm going to move it right there. And my calculator is wonderful. It does all those wonderful digits. So I'd like you to do this with a couple of things that you have that you can find with your circuit. So I'm going to pause the tape of the recording. And, oh, sorry, I want you to pause the recording and I want you to see if you can measure a bunch of items which are circular and I want you to do exactly the same thing I said. Measure the diameter, the distance across it, and then measure the string, wrap the string around it, and measure it. Okay? And I want you to pause the recording and I want you to do that and you're going to have obviously two or three things which are different than mine. So just pause the recording and do that now. Alright, now the next thing I have is six centimeters. All right, and I said it was 18 centimeters, so what I'm going to do is you take a look at my 18, and I'm going to divide that by 6, and I had an answer. Wow, it works out to be exactly 3 this time. All right. Now, when you did this, depending on your string, how it stretches and everything, you should be getting a number for almost everything you did somewhere between 3 and about 3.2. Okay, so 3.0 to 3.2.
every single one of your items should be there. In fact, the more accurate you get, the closer you should get to 3.1. Right? If you are super accurate, you might get 3.14. Right? Now, this 3.14 is unique because I don't know if you realized it, but the, does, it doesn't matter. This. It doesn't matter the size of the object. What you've done here is you have different size objects here. I had duct tape and I had a glass, but they all came out to be around three. Your objects will be completely different than mine, and they're also coming out to be around three. Okay? So what you should have noticed about the relationship between this diameter and the circumference is that would the, when you divide the, 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 relation, the circumference by the diameter, so the circumference divided by the diameter always was around 3. Actually about 3.1 depending on what you got. Okay. Now, if you are super accurate, you're going to get this number right here. 3.14159265895. In fact, it goes even further. That's actually not quite accurate. I think it's the wrong, wrong number there. 3.14159265358979323846263 and it goes on and on and on forever okay uh, you can't get to the end of this number this number is a special number and because it's special and it never ends and it never repeats they have created and given it its own title this is the greek letter pi and whenever you talk about pi in math, it always means this number 3.1415. Okay, now we're, we're at, we're always going to just round it off here, and we're going to work with 3.14. Just makes it easier for everybody if we're all using the same number. If one person uses 3.14, another person used 3.1, or another person used 3.1415, or even a third person, fourth, or whatever, doesn't matter. We want to have everybody at the same place with the same answer, so we are going to use 3.14. And that's, I want you to make note of that, because if you don't, I'll probably start I'm telling you to change. Now, pi also has its own little symbol, and that's what this is right here. This is the pi symbol, and you can see your notes right there. That is what it looks like. Now, you can have different fonts um, for printing, and the different fonts will actually have different shapes, but it'll always be basically a top number, or sorry, a top stick here going across, and then having two things come down from it, and you'll always have this relative shape. Most kinds you get something that looks like this, um, depending on your font. Uh, but either way, this is called pi, Greek letter pi. Okay, now why is that important? Well, if we know that the circumference is always, um, sorry, the pi is always equal to the circumference divided by the diameter, we can rearrange this formula using simple algebra, and we'll get to that in a couple of units, and you can find out that the circumference, if I want to find C, I have to take pi and multiply it by D, the diameter. All right? If I want to find what um, D is, I can take the circumference and divide it by pi. So these formulas here, these three formulas, you're going to have to, to memorize and know how to work with. So let's take a look at the first one, okay? Circumference is found by taking pi and multiplying it by the diameter. Rather than using uh, the word circumference and all that, we shorten it up. C represents circumference. Pi, obviously, represents 3.14. And the D is what we use for diameter, okay? And we're going to use 3.14. So what is the circumference of a circle which has a diameter of 5 centimeters? Now, whenever you're given any calculations in measurement in mathematics, there's always three steps. And you're going to be responsible for putting those three steps down every single time. A missed step is a missed mark. You always put down the formula. And then you're going to do next what's called substitution. I want you to put in the numbers which represent the variables. Remember, the variable are the letters or symbols which can represent any number. So there's three variables here. One is C, that represents circumference. Pi, which of course represents 3.14, and D, which is the diameter. Okay, so if I want to represent these numbers, these uh, you know these variables with the numbers, I sort of pull the variable out and I put their value 
in their place. So for example, just like a substitute teacher substitutes for the real teacher, these numbers come in and substitute for the variable. So I'm going to pull the pi out. I'm going to put 3.14 its value in here. Now in the question, I told you that the diameter was 5 centimeters. So this goes here. We don't put centimeters, cm, in a formula because there's so many variables, people will start to think that c and m are part of a formula. And they're going to start looking for the variable uh, c and trying to find its number and then trying to find the m and its value. So leave the, the units out till the end. So then 3.14 is the next step. So we got 5 and 3.14. When they're side by side like this, it means to multiply. So on your calculator, you would take and pull up. There we are. I pull my calculator out. Okay. So I've got 3.14. I'm going to multiply that by 5. And I get an answer of 15.7. So here is my circumference, 15.7. Now, at this point, I'm going to put back in my units. We're working in centimeters. So put in your centimeters. And, of course, if this was wrapped up in a word problem, you'd have to have something which, you know, which was a sentence. So then you could put back in the circumference of the circle with a diameter of 5 centimeters is 15.7 centimeters. All right. Okay, I've just done the first one for you. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to do the next one. So pause the recording, and uh, this thing is just not being nice to me today. Come on down. I'd like you to pause the recording. The question is, Ralph wants to place a border of rocks in a circle around, around, around a circular garden. Okay. Come on, you silly thing. There we go. He measures his garden's diameter to be 20 feet. So how long will his rock border have to be? Formula, substitution, and answer. I want you to take and, and pause the recording and complete this question, please. All right. So our first thing is to put down the formula. I will be giving you the formulas so you don't have to worry about it. So C is equal to pi D. You will be putting that down, but it will be provided. Okay, now the next thing I have to do is take and put in the values of pi, which is 3.14, and the value of d. In this case, it's 20. Now, we put these two values inside brackets, because if we don't, this is what it looks like. And somewhere along the line, you're going to see it looks like 3.1420, and it's going to be all messed up. Okay, by putting them in brackets and separating them or putting them side by side, it means to multiply. All right, so once we know that, that means multiply, on your calculator, 3.14. Come on. All right, so 3.14. My computer is being 3.14. Four times that by, in this case, 20, so 2 -oh. Don't have the, don't know why it's doing this. Oh, crap. Try 20 and equals. Okay, let's start over. 3.14 times 20 equals, there we go, 62.8. So in this case, my answer is 62.8. Remember, I'm working in feet this time, so it's going to be feet. So in my sentence, it says this rock garden will have to be 62.8 feet. Do not round it off. Leave it as a decimal. You can have a decimal here. All right. So having done that one, let's go to the next page. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change around and do it backwards. Now, to go forward, we multiplied. So to go backwards, we have to do the opposite of multiplying, which is to divide. So the formula is d, the diameter, is what you get when you take the circumference and you divide it by pi. So that's what this is in a fraction. What this means? This is in a fraction form. This means c divided by pi. All right. So we've got d, the diameter, is equal to the circumference divided by 3.14. So an architect has a metal or has the metal to create a huge circle as a piece of art for the front of a building he is constructing. If the length of the metal is 35 meters long, what will be the diameter of the circle of art? 
So the length of the metal, it being 35 meters, means that's your circumference. So we know that. Circumference is equal to 35. Now, the other piece of information we're always given is a pi is 3.14. Now, 3.14 pi does not have a unit. So, how do I figure this out? Well, take D is equal to C over pi, and then we formula, that's our formula. Our substitution becomes 35 over 3.14. And then, of course, you take on your calculator and pull that out. I wonder if this thing's going to be, going to continue being this way. Okay, so 35 divided by 3.14, and your answer equals 11.14. So, I'm going to grab that, pull it out because I want to work with it for a second here. Okay. Now, you can't obviously put all that down because if you did, you'd end up with 11.146496A. Uh, it goes on, and that's just too cumbersome and too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to round it off. Now, remember our rounding rules before. You round to two decimal places unless told otherwise. So there's your cutoff. And you want to know, does this 6 here cause this 4 to go up. Well, to determine whether that 6 causes the 4 to grow up, to go up, you take a look. Do, is this 6 5 or greater? Okay. If it is, the 4 goes up by 1. If it isn't, the 4 stays the same. Well, since the 6 is 5 or greater, that means this becomes 11.15. So, here's our final answer, 11.15. All right. And, of course, your sentence, the piece of art has a diameter of 11.15 meters. How am I going to mark this? Formula, substitution, answer, rounded correctly. In this case, we have a sentence. Okay, so I've done the first one. I'd like you to pause it, the recording, and I'd like you to complete this waiting pool question. All right, so we have a wading pool in the public park has a circumference of 120 meters. What is the radius of the pool? Okay, now, the, one of the things you have to notice about this is it asks you for a radius. It did not ask you for a diameter. But we can't find the radius, the radius from this question, but we can find the diameter. So we're going to find the diameter first, and then we're going to work with the radius. So again, the diameter is equal to the circumference divided by pi. Grab the circumference, which in this case is 120 meters, divide it by 3.14. So, wait if I can grab that and bring it down. Yeah. Okay. So, 120 divided by 3.14. And my answer is 38.2. So, there's the question, the answer. And of course, this is way too big. So, we're going to round it off. There's my cutoff right there. This 6 causes that to go up. So we have 38.22. All right. Now, having done that, let's take our 38.22. That's our answer. And we now, sorry, I kind of got ahead of myself. 38.22 is down here. I forgot that I've got to put in my answer here. This is the other answer right there. So the real answer is 38.21656, yada, yada, yada. And, of course, my real answer, the, the rounded off answer is 38.22. Now, remember that the radius is half the diameter. So in order to find the radius in this case, we have to do one more step. My radius is going to be 38.22. And I'm going to divide that by 2. All right? So 38.22. And I'm going to divide it by 2. And that gives me an answer of 1911. So here is my final answer right there, 19.11. Now, don't forget, that is without a unit. So right now, I've got 19.11. We're working in meters. So there we are. So the, di the radius of this particular waiting pool is 19.11 meters. OK, moving on to our assignment next. If you have any questions, back up and look at the two ways I did these, did these questions. If not, come and see me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions.